Hey kids! Hi kids! We're so excited you're watching Life Gets Online. And guess what? Today we're going to finish our series on creativity. Nancy, but before we get into the end of the series, let's rewind and see what we learned this entire summer. We first talked about focus, which we said faith. And then we moved on into Summer Blast, where Pastor Pete told us it's all about Jesus. Now this entire month of August, we've been learning about creativity, how God made us just like him, because he is a creative God. So I will say this has been the best summer yet. Yes, it's been an amazing summer. And let's remind everyone what's cre what creativity means. Right, and here at Life Kids, we are saying creativity is imagine what you could do because you were made in God's image. So I want you guys to repeat it after me and say, creativity. Creativity. Imagining what you could do. Imagining what you could do. Because you were made in God's image. Because you were made in God's image. And that is what our big answer talks about. Today, we are telling you that God created you to share his story. So I want you guys to say it after me. Say, God created you. God created you. To share his story. To share his story. Now, before we move on, I want you to say it even louder. Are you ready? All right, well, let's do it. Say, God created you. God created you. To share his story. To share his story. I also want to remind you about our Bible verse. And it's found in the book of Psalms 145, verse 3. And it says like this. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Now, I want you guys to repeat it after me. Are you ready? Let's do it. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Good job, everyone. Now, let's repeat it all together. Let's do it. Lord, Lord, you are great. You are great. You are really worthy of praise. You are really worthy of praise. No one, no one can completely understand. Can completely understand how great you are. How great you are. And once again, this Bible verse is found in the book of Psalms 145, verse 3. And I know that by now everybody knows this verse because we've been talking about it this entire month of August. But now it is time for us to do something that we really love to do here on Life Kids, and that is to praise Jesus. So everybody, please stand up and let's praise Jesus.
awesome song. I love to see you guys dancing and I love to praise Jesus. How about if we continue praising Jesus to this next song? Praising Jesus is an amazing thing. We get to thank Him for everything that He has done for us, but we're not done yet. Let's continue praising Jesus. This life is a journey, a path made for me, with every step I take. As I run this race, I'm becoming the person you call me to be, a child of God, a life redeemed, so I set my eyes on you, Jesus, I'm ready.
With every step I take With every step I take I'm becoming the person you call me to be The child of God time of praise, but now I invite everyone to take a seat and watch this Bible story together. God's Story, the Sermon on the Mount. So part of God's story is about a sermon Jesus gave on the side of a mountain and what he did afterwards. And it goes like this. One day, when Jesus saw crowds gathering to hear him teach or see him do miracles, he went to the side of a mountain. It was near the Sea of Galilee across from a place called Capernaum. From there, he gave a message all about God's kingdom and his love. We call this message the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus started by explaining who would get blessings or favor from God. He said the most blessed people are those who are poor, sad, or humble. He said God shows favor to people who are just or treat others fairly and people who are merciful or show love to those who don't deserve it. He said the people who are pure, who bring peace, or who get hurt for doing right will be rewarded for their actions in heaven. In other words, the people who love others, even when it makes them seem weak or unimportant on earth, are like heroes in God's kingdom. Anyway, Jesus went on to explain that when we believe in and follow him, it's our job to show everyone else who he is by loving them. That means going out of our way not only to comfort and help our friends, but also forgive people who hurt us, love our enemies, and give to people in need. The thing is, Jesus didn't just talk about love, he showed it all the time. In fact, right after giving this sermon, Jesus spent the rest of the day helping everyone he met. First, as Jesus came down from the mountain, a man with a skin disease called leprosy knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Usually, no one wanted to be around people with leprosy, but Jesus touched him and said, I am willing, be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared. Then, when Jesus arrived in Capernaum a bit later, a soldier said to him, Lord, my servant is in terrible pain. Right away, Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The officer said, Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. Jesus told him, Because you believed, it has happened. The officer's servant was healed. A little later, Jesus arrived at his disciple Peter's house. Peter's mother-in-law was there too, sick in bed with a high fever. Jesus touched her hand and the fever left. Later that evening, many other people who were demon-possessed or sick came to see Jesus. He brought relief to all of them. At the end of the day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples. Suddenly, a fierce storm came out of nowhere. Waves began crashing into the boat. The disciples realized that even though they were in the middle of a giant storm, Jesus was fast asleep. They shouted, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Jesus said, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he told the wind and waves to stop. 
they did. That day, Jesus taught a lot of people how to love and showed them what love looks like. Whenever somebody took their sickness or pain or fear to Jesus, he helped them. Everybody who met Jesus got to experience his love. And when we love like Jesus, everyone who meets us can feel his love too. And that's the story of the Sermon on the Mount. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Crowds gathered. Jesus went to a mountain. He gave a sermon. He talked about God's kingdom. He told us how to love others. Jesus didn't just talk about love. He showed it. He healed sick people. He saved people who were demon-possessed. He calmed storms. He showed his love to everyone he met. Our job is to do that too. And that's a part of God's story. Hey, Life Kids, it is so good to know that you guys are here watching. I'm Jared, and I'm really excited to be able to share this Bible story with you. I'm just going to elaborate on a couple of things that you guys saw in the video. I love those videos, by the way. I just love how, how silly they can also be. Um, but you learn so much from them. And I want to make sure you guys learned exactly what you guys saw in the video. So I want to read a portion of scripture that starts in Matthew 5, verse 13. I'll give you a little time to look at that. If you have your Bibles, Life Kids, get those out so you can read with me. So it's Matthew 5, verses 13 through 16. Let me start with verse 13, okay? And it says, You are the salt of the earth, but suppose the salt loses its saltiness. How can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything. It will be thrown out. People will walk all over it. Watch this. He also said in verse 14, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill can't be hidden. Also, people do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do and they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Let's talk a little bit about what Jesus was talking about. See, when Jesus was on the mountainside teaching his disciples, they were all gathered around and they were listening to these wise words Jesus was talking about. Salt, light, and they were trying to understand. And Jesus was so wise that he did his very best to be able to tell the disciples what they meant. And I wanna to talk to you about what I believe Jesus was talking about, right? So let's first talk about the salt of the earth, all right? So I actually brought a prop. I brought some salt, as you can see. You guys probably have some salt in your, your homes. Um, boys or girls, if you have any salt, you know, you can kind of find it and see and know what I'm talking about, right? So this is a salt. And if you guys have ever used salt, which I believe you guys have, um, salt is used primarily on food, right? Now it can be used for other things. It's not just for food, but let's stick with food so we can understand a little bit about what salt does to food, okay? So whenever you put salt on food, it's gonna taste better. Because if you have ever tried something, like let's say tacos with no salt, it kind of tastes a little bit bland. I'll, I'll say another word, it may taste a little bit boring, okay? Um, now hopefully no one makes you know, tacos with, with no salt and you just you know, end up loving it. If, if anyone makes tacos like that for you, that's okay. But I'm telling you, I would really try some salt. Okay, because when you put salt on your tacos and you try it on there, I'm telling you, it's a different taste. Let me tell you what salt does to tacos. It makes them taste better. Whenever you put salt on something, it will be better. It's gonna increase what it already is, what you're trying, what you're eating. So salt is pretty good. Now, I, I don't always recommend putting salt on ice cream because that's not really what you're supposed to do with salt. But whenever you have salt like on tacos, right? Or you have salt on chicken, I'm telling you, it tastes so much better. It makes 
the food better. When Jesus was telling his disciples that they are the salt of the earth, he was telling his disciples that they have a unique purpose and that they make those around them better. So believing in Jesus, you have what's called flavor. And when you're around people, you make them better. You make them better because you're salt, you're unique, you have a purpose. And Jesus intends for you to share his story through you because you are the salt, you're special. And I want you to know that you're not just to put on food. So don't try to roll up in a tortilla for me, okay? That's not what he meant. What he meant is that just like salt and it makes everything else better, you also make everything else better. And that's when you have Jesus in your heart and you believing him. I'm telling you, we have a creative God and Jesus is so creative that he used the reference of salt and light to bring this to us. As a matter of fact, I wanna be able to define creativity for you and just show you what it, what it means, okay? And here's how creativity is defined. Imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. Wow, that is awesome. See, God is so creative that he wants to share his story with everybody. He wants everybody to know that they are saved. He wants everybody to know that he loves them. And when you become that salt to other people, he can share his story through you. I'm telling you, our God is an awesome God. Let me tell you the Bible verse for this month that will actually help you understand how creative and amazing our God is. See, it says here in Psalms 145, verse three. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Life kids, our God is an awesome God. He knows what he's talking about and he gave Jesus the wisdom and revelation to teach us who we really are in Jesus. And one of those, as we just learned, is the salt of the earth. Now let's talk about the lamp. I'm gonna read that portion of scripture where it talks about the lamp again, being the light, all right? So let me read that to you. It actually starts in verse 14 of Matthew 5. It says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill can't be hidden. Also, people do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do and they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Let me tell you life kids that Jesus considers you a light and I want you to know you are a light. So let's explain what a light is, what, what, it's, what are light for? Why do we use lamps, right? So Jesus made a wonderful reference and he's saying, if there's a lamp in the house, you're not gonna put it under the table, right? We don't need anybody to light up where our shoes are. No, no, no. What we need is to know where things are, right? So we put lamps on the top of things like the stand he's talking about so we can see all around it. Lights guide a way for us to see. It helps us see. And I brought a lamp here, right? Or a flashlight actually. And I'm gonna tell you that you've probably experienced times when it's raining and the power goes out. And maybe you're the one screaming. Maybe you're the one saying, oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe you're the one that's kind of like curious, like, ooh, what's gonna happen now? or you're just waiting to see when the lights will turn on. Or maybe you're the one saying, help me, help me, I, I, I can't see. Whatever it is, what you need at that moment is light. Because no one likes to be stuck in darkness. And if you do, we'll talk, we'll talk to you another time, okay? But nobody likes to be stuck in darkness, right? So 
usually when the power goes out, you'll get a light. You'll get a light of some sort. Sometimes you get your phone light. Sometimes you get a flashlight like this one and you'll start shining it around everywhere so you can see, you know, where others are. You may try to go find your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister or whoever you're looking for. Lights help you see the way. And I'm telling you, when Jesus was telling his disciples that they are light, he was not mistaken. He, he was not telling them that they can just walk at night and start, you know, guiding people with themselves. That's not what he meant. What he means is that life kids, when you believe in Jesus, you have a light inside of you that will help others see what's right. When you show them the right way, that's the light that Jesus is talking about. He's talking about being able to help people see what they're doing. So sometimes you've probably encountered people, you've been with your friends, maybe even family, where in your heart you were like, you know, that doesn't look right. It doesn't seem like that's the right thing to do. Or maybe even at school, you know, you've had some friends who were willing to laugh at somebody or, you know, even cheat on a test and you were like, inside your heart, you know, you know, I don't think that was the right thing to do. I don't have a good feeling about this. And I want to tell you, you're not weird. That is the light of Jesus inside of you. That's what Jesus was talking about, how he made you a light. When you have Jesus, you can see the right things, just like Jesus. And you can help people do the right thing. And that is why when Jesus is saying, you need to be put on a stand, it's not that you need to stand up on stage. No, what he's saying is that you need to do things where people can see what the right things are because when he's inside of you, you'll do the right things and you can help others too. You can help share God's story when you are the light of the world and when you are the salt of the earth. So remember life kids, God created you to share his story. You are the salt of the earth. Remember, when you are with people, you make them better because God gave you a purpose. God made you special to share his story and you add something special wherever you are. And remember that you are also the light of the earth. So when somebody or you see something that you're not feeling right in your heart, you are the light. You can show them the way. You have Jesus. And that means that you can do the right thing all the time. So remember life kids, that you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the earth. I wanna invite you life kids to close your eyes. And don't worry, I'm not gonna trick you, but I want you to trust me and just close your eyes. And I just wanna to speak to you for a little and just pray for you. I want you to remember that God created you to share his story. He is so creative that he put himself inside of you so that others can be better and they can also see what you see. When Jesus is inside of you, there is so much that you can do to share God's story. I want to tell you that you're special. You have a purpose. You are valuable. And God wants to use you in mighty ways to be the salt and light of the earth. Close your eyes. They're closed. Keep them closed. And let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the life kids that are at home watching. Lord, I bless them. They are blessed. Lord, I thank you for their hearts, for their lives. Lord, I thank you for this message 
of the salt and light that they are. God, I thank you because you make them special. They are so special, God. And I pray that you could use them in every way that you can to share your story. Father, I also pray that they can know inside of them that they are light. They can help other people do the right thing. And they don't need to hide. They don't need to be under anything. But they need to be in a place where they can be seen. And Lord, I pray that you, Father, would uplift them, bring them to a place where people could see them, Father, so that they can see you, the Lord, our master, the one we love, and that's you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you, and we thank you so much for this lesson. I bless every kid at home. Let them feel your love, your peace, and kindness over them. And I ask that this message of salt and light sticks with them forever and wherever they go. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you, live kids. Y'all have a wonderful day. Welcome back, boys and girls, to the Pop Quiz. My name is Richard, and this is Victoria. Hello, we are so excited to be back with y'all. I hope y'all are ready for this Pop Quiz. Exactly, and this is an important week because this is not only the last week of August, but it will decide who gets the punishment. Ooh! Right? Yes, yeah, so, you know, nerves are up, tensions are high, right, Victoria? Yeah, stakes are high, we got okay. this. Okay, but, you know, we're gonna go ahead with our same game and questions, right? Can you explain it one more time? Yeah, just in case you guys are here for the first time or anything like that, we're gonna give you guys a question and you're gonna help us answer correctly, okay? Yes. So you're gonna scream out A, B, or C, and if you get that correct, you get 2,500 points. And then after that, to, we're, we'll go to the second part with the cups, okay? So we're gonna take one of the balls, we're gonna put it under a cup, Richard or I are gonna turn around so that we can't see, but y'all will be able to tell. And then we're gonna mix it up, and then you will have to scream out which cup you think it's under, okay? And then after you get the cup right or incorrect, if you get it right, you get 5,000 points, and then we get double points for round two. That's right. And boys, so we really need your help, and girls, we need your help to really pay attention, answer the questions correctly, and help us out, because, you know, the stakes are on the line right now. That's right, don't right. forget, we are tied yes. right now. Boys and girls are tied, so it's anyone's game today. Exactly, all right, so Victoria, we're gonna go ahead and start with round one. Yes, let's okay. go. I'll ask you guys a question first. Okay. All right, first question is, what is our big answer for today? Is it A, God created you to be creative. B, God created you to share his story. Or C, God created you to be salt and light. Uh, okay. That's interesting. Qu uh, answers. The question, boys, was what is our big answer for today? Now, do you think it's A, B, or C? And you know, C, C is interesting because I know if at the end of this, if, I, if we lose, I'm, I'm going to be pretty salty, you know. Ooh. But, uh, boys, what do you think? I need your help. Okay. All right, Victoria, we got our answer. All right, what's your answer? All right, the boys are shouting out to me. Oh. And they're saying it's B. It's B? Yes. 100% sure? 100% sure. All right, B is correct. Awesome start, boys. Now, Richard, I'm going to need you to turn around. Okay. All right, boys, pay close attention, okay? All right, and I'm gonna count to three. One, two, three. All right, Richard, you can go ahead and turn around. Okay. Which cup is it under? All right, boys, please, I hope you were paying attention. Let me know, do you think it's under the first cup? The second cup? or the third cup? 
Okay. Now, pick your answer correctly Ooh. and wisely. Take your time. All right. And Victoria? Yeah. We're going to go with the first cup. With the first cup? Yes. All right. Let's find out in three, two, one. Ooh. Okay. It's All right. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. It was in the second cup oh. right here. <laughs> okay. But you know what? That was a good first round. Y'all got yeah. 2,500 points. Okay. All right. Now, girls, let's get it going. All, All right. right. So, girls, it's time for your question. Now, the question is today's Bible story comes from what book of the Bible? Is it A, the book of Mark, B, the book of Matthew, or is it C, the book of Psalms. Ooh. These are all really good books. But girls, I know you were paying attention to the story today. Where, where is it found? Is it A or B or C? All right, all right. I hear you. We are in agreement. We're going to go with B. B? Yes. You sure? Yes. And B is the correct answer. All right. all right, all right. All right, good job. So, Victoria, go ahead and turn around. Okay. All right, girls, pay attention. Okay. Victoria? Yes. Go ahead and turn around. Okay. All right. Girls, scream it out to me. Is it in the first cup, the second cup, or the third cup? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, we're gonna go with the second cup. The second cup. The second cup. Are you sure? We're sure. And that is correct. Oh, we just got 5,000 points right there, girls. Good job, good job. Okay, that's all good. That's all good. Good job, girls. You guys did a great job. Definitely got me sweating right now, <laughs> but uh, it's okay. All right, yeah. well, now it's time for round, round two. two, and it's double points, right, yes, Richard? Exactly, double. You so ready? I'll go first this time. You wanna go first this time? Yes. Oh, all right, all right, let's do it. So, Victoria, the question states is Jesus said we are the blank and blank of the world. Now, the answers are either A, salt and light, B, salt and lamp, or C, the salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. I mean, you need salt and pepper with like everything, right? That's true. Um, but I know my girls were paying attention. Girls, I need you to scream it out, okay? Is it A or B or C? Y'all are so smart. I agree with you. We're gonna go with A. A? Yes. Okay, and A is the correct answer. Yes. Okay, good Awesome job, job girls. All right, you're on the roll. All right, yeah, Victoria, we are. turn around, please. All right, all right, all right. All right, so girls, pay attention. One more time. Okay. Victoria? Yeah. Go ahead and turn it back around. All right. My girls, we got 10,000 points on the line right here. Give me your best guess. Scream it out. Is it under the first cup or the second cup or the third cup? Who? This one might be a little more tough. All right. We're going to go with the third cup. The third cup. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Positive. We're gonna go with the third cup. Okay, and that is oh, correct. 10,000 points. Okay. All right. Girls, y'all are wow. killing it today. You guys did a great job. All right. All right, last round for the yes. boys. Let's do it. Okay. Last question for you it is where is our memory verse found? Is it A, Psalm 143, 5, or B, Psalm 145, 5, or C, Psalm 145, 3? 
This is a little tricky. That one is tricky. Uh, okay, boys, I really need your help on this one. It said, where is our memory verse found? Now, do you think it's A, B, or C? Okay, boys, please shout it out to me. I need your help. Cause I'm not sure where you were paying attention, right? I know you were. Okay. All right, Victoria? Yes. We're gonna go with C. With C? Yes. All right, C is correct. Okay. Awesome, 5,000 right. right there. Okay. All right, Richard, I need you to turn around. All right. Boys, keep your eye on the ball, okay? And I'm gonna count to three, okay? One, two, three. All right, Richard, go ahead and turn around. All right, help him out, boys. Okay, all right, boys. Okay, Victoria. Yeah. Boys, what cup do you think it's under? The first cup, second cup, or the third cup? Come on. We will go, if I hear this correctly, the boys are shouting, third cup. This cup. Yes. All right, we're gonna find out. Okay. Drum roll, please. And three, two, one. Ooh. That is tough. It was actually under this first cup right here. Okay. Y'all did an incredible job, yeah, but Richard. Job, yes. I mean, yeah. I, I heard you're good at math, right? Yeah, hey, I'm pretty good. Yeah, so uh, you're adding up all the scores and stuff. Who, uh, who won today? Uh, who won this whole month? One, two, three. Uh, I, I, I think it's, it's the girls. The right? girls yeah. win today. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. But we, you know, we both did our best. The yeah, boys yeah. and the girls, you know, they gave it their all. That's very true. But, you know, we'll accept it. We are the losers for this this month. Just okay. for a little bit. But yeah. right now, girls, I totally forgot, but we need to celebrate together, okay? So get up on your feet and let's do this, okay? Girls rule, girls rule. Awesome job, girls. Y'all are the champions for this month. Y'all did an incredible job. That's right. You know, I, I kind of had a feeling, you know, I'd be a little salty at the end of this, but it was a well-fought battle between the boys and the girls, and the girls came out on top, so we have to give it to them. Congratulations, guys. Thank it's you. Beautiful trophy. For the good sportsmanship. Yeah. It was a really fun yeah. time this month, but you know what time it is, Richard? What's that? It's time for the Sugar Crash. Stay tuned. Oh. Hey boys and girls, and welcome to the Sugar Crash. I hope y'all are ready for this, cause I definitely am. I had to put my hair back, pull my hair back for this one, okay? Cause I'm ready. But Richard, do you have any preference on what you would rather have yeah, first? Yeah, uh, no, not really, just, let's get it open. All right, I'm gonna go with the maple syrup first. All right, let's do it. Help me count down from three, two, one. Oh! I can hear it. Nice, 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 nice. Good start, good start. Wow. Oh. All right. Nice and mapley. How you feeling, Richard? Like a pancake? He said like a pancake. That's a good one, that's a good one. Accurate. All right, I'm gonna go in with the chocolate syrup right here. Watch closely, this is super cool. Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I can smell this one, like super strong. Oh, there's a little pool forming down there. <laughs> All right, I might come back to this, Mike, because I, I love chocolate, but now we're gonna go with the flour. 
All right, I don't know if I should just go all in or sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh, I'll go all in. Oh. Nice, 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 nice. Richard, you look great, bro. Thanks for taking one for the team today. All right, and now I'm gonna go in with the feathers, last finishing touch. Kind of like a cherry on top, you know? You really look like a, like a fudge sundae. All right, and actually, you know, a little, bit, a little bit more maple syrup and chocolate won't hurt. No, 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 no. I, I'm a saucy person, so. <laughs> All right, last finishing touch. All right. All right, boys and girls, hope you can take a good look right here. This is a sugar crash. But Richard, thank you so much for doing this for us. I hope you guys had an awesome time. I hope you guys stay tuned for next week because we are having a new challenge and new questions, okay? So it's gonna be a whole nother level, all right? So we hope to see you next week. See ya. Hi kids, I am so happy you're watching. What an awesome Bible story we just watched. This week we're talking about being the salt and the light of this world. And what a great opportunity for us to create our own nightlight using salt and light. For the first part of the project, we're gonna be using a glass container or a plastic container. We're gonna need glue, salt, food coloring, and a light. You can use, I have this one right here, or we can use the LED, LED lights, like this one. The first step is to grab the container. I'm gonna be using the glass container today. Grab your glue. Right here. And we're gonna start putting glue inside the container. Like this. Make sure you cover the whole container. Now we're gonna grab our salt. I put it in a, in a Ziploc bag so it's easy for us to mix it. We're gonna add food coloring to this and you can use any color. I'm gonna use orange. Just a few drops. And then we're gonna mix it. There we go, now it's orange. Now we're gonna grab some of it and pour it inside the container. I'm gonna do a little bit. You can start shaking the container so it can spread all over. I usually have this piece of paper to cover the top and shake it so it's easier and faster. There we 
we go. Now we're gonna wait for the glue to dry out for a few minutes. A few minutes later. And now that the glue is dried, we're gonna put our LED lights inside. There you go. And to test it out, we're gonna turn our lights off. And this is our final product. I hope you guys have fun doing this activity and don't forget to share with us through our social media. And don't go anywhere because the fun is not over. See you guys next week. What an awesome craft we just did. And I love to see you guys being creative because that's exactly what God did. He created you so you could be creative. And that is what we're telling you here today. We're saying that God created you so you can share his story. So I want you guys to say it after me. Say it really loud, okay? Say, God created you. God created you. To share his story. To share his story. And that is exactly what Jared told us today, that we are the salt and we are the light of this world so we can share God's story with everybody. So Nancy, thank you once again for showing us this amazing craft. You're welcome, and you know what? I love to see everyone creating new things together. And that's what we love to do. You know another thing that we love to do here in Life Kids? What is it? And that is praising Jesus. So everybody, stand up and let's praise Jesus.
by my side And I'm running, I'm breaking through the night By the power of your mind, the power of your mind